I grew up during the era of the Nintendo DS, and my go-to game besides Mario Kart was Dobutsu no Mori, known as Animal Crossing in English. However, since Animal Crossing Wild World, I haven't really been keeping up to date with the newer versions of the game. But I recently got a chance to play a little Animal Crossing on my sister's new Nintendo Switch. And so much has changed in this game. But the thing I want to talk about today is Animal Crossing and its relationship to gender. According to the World Health Organization, gender refers to the socially constructed characteristics of women and men. It varies from society to society and can be changed. In the modern Western world, the majority of people whose sex is female would identify as women, and the majority of people whose sex is male would identify as men. But as stated in the WHO definition, Gender is a social construct. So there are people out there who think that their sex and their gender don't necessarily align, or people who just don't fit into the binary at all. And you might be thinking, so what does gender have anything to do with a video game? If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've played Animal Crossing before, but just in case you haven't, let me do a quick summary. Animal Crossing is what's called a social simulation video game. Sims would also fall into this category. There is no clear objective to the game, but the main feature is that you get to explore different social interactions with the computer simulated characters within the game. You could create an alter ego for yourself for these social simulation games, but the majority of people like to recreate their own image. So if you're a guy, you probably want your social simulation character to be a guy. Same goes for girls. But what happens if you don't identify on that binary? Or what if you are a girl but you don't fit into the stereotype of what a girl should look and act like? A good social simulation game should be able to accommodate for these factors. So first let's analyze the version of Animal Crossing that I grew up playing. Animal Crossing Wild World starts on a rainy day. You're sitting in the back of a taxi heading to your new village. In the cab, the taxi driver asks you a number of questions and depending on how you answer them, it dictates how your avatar will turn out. And this is where your gender comes in. The taxi driver asks for your name. And after you type it in, he asks you, do you like your name? And you're given three options for the response. You can either say, kakkoi namae daro, kawaii namae desho, or chigaute. In the English version, this is translated into Yup, it's burly, yeah, it's cute, or that's not it. Essentially, this option is meant to determine whether you are a boy, a girl, or you know, if you mistyped your name and you need to rewrite it. So Wild World definitely makes you choose between male or female. There's no in-between option. Not only does it make you choose between the binary, but it enforces a stereotype that girls are cute and guys are... burly? And you might be wondering why the game doesn't just directly ask for your gender. Well, it's supposed to be for immersion. It's not meant to feel like a game, it's meant to feel like a real taxi ride. And a real taxi driver probably wouldn't ask if you're a boy or a girl. So it's trying to ask the question through subtle dialogue. But unfortunately, this just ends up reinforcing weird gender roles. Anyways, once the game figures out your gender, it assigns one of eight avatar types in your gender category. Yup, you heard me right. There were only eight types of boys and eight types of girls, and there was no way to customize how you turned out. Now, if you were a real Animal Crossing geek like me, you probably owned a few Animal Crossing books. Yes, that is correct, children. This is how we used to get insider info on games back in the day. Anyways, this book probably could tell you exactly how to answer all of the taxi driver's questions so that you get the avatar that you want. But there honestly wasn't a lot of variety to choose from to start with. First off, all of the avatars had the same skin tone. All of the boys had short hair which was either darker brown or lighter brown, and they all wore t-shirts and pants. The girls either had a short bob haircut or a three-part pigtail that made you look like a oopa oopa. The girls' hairs could be dark brown, light brown, or pink, so that's some variety, but they all wore dresses. So not only were the character options exclusionary against people who didn't fit in the binary, it generally reinforced stereotypes that even people who identify as male or female might feel uncomfortable with. And you might be thinking, well, 
this is just the default setting I can customize later, but this is not the case. Once you leave that cap, there is no way for you to change your gender or any of your facial features. Even the dress that you show up in. You can always change clothes, but the clothes will always tailor to look like dresses for girls and t-shirts for boys. If your avatar spent a lot of time outdoors during the summer months, you could get a little bit of a tan. So I guess that's some variety in skin tone. But you could at least change your hairstyle. But this is only after a lot of gameplay. You have to spend money at the Tanukichi store to keep on upgrading their store. And after spending a certain amount of money and making sure your friends come over and buy things from your store as well, you finally get upgraded to the Tanukichi Depato, which has a hair salon in the back. But the hair salon also works similarly to how your original avatar creation worked. The hairdresser asks you a number of questions and depending on how you answer those questions, you get a new hairstyle. You can, of course, refer to your handy dandy Animal Crossing Insider Edition book. Or you just took the risk of being given one of the eight girls' hairstyles. Yup, if you're a girl, you could only get girls' haircuts. And if you're a boy, you could only get boys' haircuts. And, well, let's just put it this way. None of the eight boys' haircuts would have made a hippie or a surfer boy happy. And I don't know what Pink would have chosen if she were playing Animal Crossing back in 2005. Well, actually, I know what she would have done. She would have tried every single female haircut available, which unlocked a secret feature that allowed you to try haircuts from the opposite gender. So you could look more masculine as a female character, but you were still stuck wearing a dress. Interestingly, this was not a problem for the animal villagers in your village because they all wore t-shirts, only t-shirts, like just full on Donald Duck style. The characters were assigned male or female gender, but it was very difficult to tell from first glance. It was only when you went up and started talking to them that you might get some clues as to which gender they are. Each character has a unique way of speaking, both in the text as well as in the sound effects. Female characters tended to have a higher pitched voice and male characters tended to have a lower pitch voice. But I mean, the dead giveaway was the fact that when you were speaking to them, the character's name would be either highlighted red or highlighted blue, depending on their gender. So there was a clear gender binary in Animal Crossing Wild World. But what I find fascinating is the fact that even though all of these characters were assigned a gender, this gender was sometimes flipped in the form release of the game. Gures is a giraffe character who is a fashion designer. He is a male in the Japanese version of the game, but everywhere else in the world, Gures is a female. And although we don't know about his sexuality, I think he was meant to be a fabulous gay fashion role model. But now in the international release, all that context is taken away and he is just a girl. And now a whole generation of people have missed out on a gay giraffe joke. Another character who is male in the Japanese and Korean version, but is female in the international version is Lorang, a camel who occasionally visits the village to sell wallpaper and carpets. And like the only reason I can think of for Lorang's gender change are those luscious eyelashes. Because in the West, you throw eyelashes on something and it immediately turns into a girl. So this version of the game is what I grew up with. And I absolutely loved it. But looking back, there were clearly some problematic things. I was happy with the pale brown haired character that I got because I'm Japanese. And all of my friends were happy with the characters that they got because they were all Japanese too. This was a Japanese game made for a Japanese audience. So I think it's natural that at that point, they didn't think it was problematic to have only one skin tone. And with many Japanese kids used to wearing super gendered uniforms for school, it probably wasn't as big of a deal that each gender could only wear things that were well, made for that gender. But times have changed and the place has changed. This newest version of Animal Crossing is being released in 2020 and it's no longer a Japanese game. It's a worldwide phenomenon. So let's compare how things have changed in Animal Crossing New Horizon. In this version of the game, you start your journey at an airport. And for your personal avatar, rather than being assigned one based off of some personality test, you're asked to take a passport photo, which takes you to a screen which allows you to have full control over what your character looks like. Now, before you get started on creating your avatar, you're technically asked to choose between male or female. And I mean, thank God they didn't ask me if I'm cute or 
super girly. Anyways, this generates a more masculine looking or feminine looking avatar, which you use as your base for customizing this character into something that looks more like you. And in Animal Crossing, everybody has the same body. It's not like just because you choose girl, you suddenly get boobs. So all of the customization is about skin tone, hair color, hair texture, and facial features. And in this version of the game, there are no hairstyles or clothing that are gender exclusive. So I honestly don't even know why they have this male or female option in the beginning. Maybe this is just for the sake of data collection to see you know, if more boys or girls are playing Animal Crossing. Or maybe it's for those gendered languages like Spanish or French. But clearly for a language like English, this gender distinction is completely unnecessary. And for the English version of Animal Crossing, you still choose between the boy icon or the girl icon, but rather than it being called sex or gender, it's being called style. The game also uses gender neutral pronouns using they them to refer to other players. Now, this is only in the English version of the game. In all other versions, when you're shown the boy and girl icon, it says choose your gender. And this has enraged some people. Not because people are saying, why are there gender options in all of these other languages? Quite the opposite. People are saying that there should be gender options in Animal Crossing. But because Nintendo was bullied by the LGBTQ community in America, they took away the gender options for the English versions to appease the liberal left. But to be honest, I don't really understand the outrage. It literally changes nothing about the gameplay. And there are so many other ways in which New Horizon was already heading towards non-genderedness. For example, the names of the animals are no longer highlighted red or blue depending on their gender. The color simply reflects the color scheme of the character. All of the animal villagers also have access to all of the clothes that we have access to. And if you decide to give a more feminine piece of clothing as a gift to a male animal, they'll gladly accept the gift and happily wear their new maid dress. Yes, gender does play a really important role in our social interactions. Just because gender is a social construct doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And Animal Crossing allows you to express yourself as feminine or as masculine as you want. But this newest version of the game doesn't constrict you into those gender stereotypes. I think that's awesome. Animal Crossing New Horizon came out during a really unique time in our history. In the middle of a pandemic, while many of us were under lockdown, Animal Crossing came out and we could finally live vicariously through our online characters. We could escape into this world where everything was normal again. Would I really want this escapist world to tell me that I could only wear dresses? To tell me that I couldn't get a short haircut? I'm glad that Animal Crossing has become more inclusive in so many different ways. 2020 has been a really difficult year for everybody, but Animal Crossing, through their inclusivity, is providing a space for everybody to be themselves and escape into a world where we can make money from hitting rocks and shaking trees while we wait for our unemployment checks to come in.